In this video we're going to look at creating histograms. And here we have um, a table with weights and frequencies. And it says use the frequency distribution to construct a histogram. Okay. So we want to use StatCrunch. So we can just go in here, click that, open the information in StatCrunch. You'll see that it's ordered here. And then you would think that you'd go to graph and click histogram. But when you're given a summary of this data, it's already given the frequencies and stuff, you'll actually want to create a bar plot and go with summary. Now we need to fill this out. So we see that our categories are the weight, our counts are, are in the frequency. Now we're making a frequency type uh, graph because we have frequency here. You might make a relative frequency or a percent or something like that. Frequency here. We want to order this by the worksheet. The worksheet means it's going to be ordered this way as it comes out. And let's just put the value above the bar so we can see it. And then that should be it. Compute. Now this is a bar plot graph, right? There's, there's space in here, whereas this is a histogram. Uh, there's no space in between there. But this allows us to get the numbers from the graph if we need them. And they're matching up with these guys here. 147, 147, you can tell it's right. And then you can kind of get the general shape. Now if you want to make this a little bit more accurate, this goes up to 15. You click down here and take the y-axis and bring it to 15. And then the x-axis will be fine. They're just these are in like little classes, right? Little subcategories, whereas this is this is better for the classes. Okay. So now I can be able to see which one it is. It goes up and it has two tops that are the same, right? It goes up, two tops, it goes up and up and up like this. This one doesn't do quite the same as it should. It's going a little too high here, right? Five, it's, it's one and one. So one and one. That's how I would do that. And basically the second part of the question here, does the histogram appear to, to depict data that have a normal distribution? The histogram does appear to depict a normal distribution, right? because it's low on the beginning, high in the middle, and low on the end. So this would be a rough estimate of a normal distribution, right? It's not exact, but it's pretty dang close. Okay, let's look at another problem. In this problem, I'm given a table of data, right? So the table is available for time in seconds of fast food restaurant. Use the data to construct a histogram. Begin with a lower class limit of 70 and 40 is a width. So it's got to tell us what we want to start with and go to. So I click this, open all this data in StatCrunch. I might just click up here and sort it. This way it sorts the data in order in case I want to see what the first one is and last one. Now here is where you're going to go to histogram because that's how a histogram is made. It's made to use the, the information you were given. So service times, we're going to use a frequency again. Okay, this is a frequency histogram. The bins are the classes. So we start at 70. I already typed that in before. And we have a width of 40. So you just type that in. Let's put the value above the bar again so we can see it. And then we should be good. Now here's a proper histogram. Let's change the y-axis. It goes up to 25. So I'll do 25. X-axis goes to 270 and that's right, 269. So it looks good. 12, 21, 9, 6, 2. And then we can kind of match it up, right? 12, 29, yep. That looks like the one right there. You can also, you know, get a little closer so we can see it if you want. The last thing says the histogram has a longer right tail. So the distribution is skewed to the right. So the tail tells you as it goes down as the tail, that tells you where it's skewed to the right, skewed to the left, symmetric, right? Okay, so let's try this problem here. It has a data again. Research your number of televisions a household, 40 randomly sampled selected households, and here's the information. So we'll, of course, open up in StatCrunch. There it is. I'm going to order this. Since it is data, I can just order it. I can see how many zeros there are all the way down to how many fives, right? Zero to five, 40. Okay. Now, there, in this example, we look and we see, let's see, um, are there, is this data discrete or continuous? Well, this is discrete. You can count it. It's uh, finite. So this data is discrete because they have whole number values. Um, 
something that's continuous to be a measurement like time, distance, length, okay? That's continuous. Constructed frequency distribution, okay? So rather than counting these ourselves and putting them in there, we easily count 0, 1. Let's go ahead and go to graph again to histogram. You could try the bar plot as well in this one because there really are no um, classes, right? There's just zero, there's just individual numbers. But anyway, we'll go to histogram. We will do a frequency. Now, you can leave it with no classes or you can just say, well, start at zero and go to one and you'll see it looks a little weird, you know, but you'll see what I mean. And I can show you kind of how to come back here and fix it if we need to. Value above the bar, compute. So we're really just really interested in how many were 0 to 1. Well, 0, right? 0 to 1, that's what we're talking about. How many are really zeros are there? There's one of those. How many from 1 to 2? That's just saying how many 1s are there. There's 14, 14, 7. So we have those numbers right down here. We can see it. You can always just hold over it to see it as well. Okay? It doesn't look like it's really good. This, this zero should be in the middle, right? There's options on how to do that if you'd like. You could come into, go back in here, and think about what class would you make so the zero was the middle, right? If zero was the middle, negative 0.5, and then if I made a one width, zero would be the middle maybe. Okay, now zero is the middle, but I can't, it's not reading that, right? And then, go down here and maybe make tick marks. Tick marks are where, where they want those little tick marks that maybe make them every 0.5. The reason why I'm doing 0.5 is because we started here at negative 0.5, so every half it would make another a tick mark from our, from our bin, so a half from our bin. Now, you don't need to do all that. We can go back to normal how it was, but this kind of matches up what it is 0, 1, 2, 3. So I'm just going to go back and take this out. Put this back to 0 and 1. So that was like how I had at the beginning. Just no notice that sometimes when you do this data, you have bins or you have classes, right? So then you're able to fill in those bins with the class width and then where the class starts, and it makes it all nice. Okay. Scrolling down, we need the relative frequency. Well, it's pretty easy to do that. Go back and edit this and hit click relative frequency. And there are values. Notice the relative frequencies are in three decimals. We're only given two. Well, hold over it and you can see the answers to three decimals. 0.175, this one is actually 0 0.350, right? 0.175. Okay, so there's our relative frequency. Then it says, what percentage of households in the survey have three televisions? Zero televisions, one television, two televisions, three television, 17.5%. What percentage have four or more? Four or more takes 0 0.075 plus 0 0.25, adding those together, right? 0.25 and 7 point, or 0 0.075, 10%. Construct a frequency histogram, okay? Well, we already did that. We go back here and go back to frequency. There's my frequency histogram. Low at one, up to 14, and down to one. Again, you could adjust your X and Y values if you want them to match. This go up to 16, etc. Construct a relative frequency. Well, that's uh, already done too, right? There it is. Okay, same kind of idea. Put it to 0 0.4, so you're matching. And then look at it, How? where's the tail? Skewed right. So that's how you can use the histogram with the data. And then you'd use a bar plot if you're given a summary to create these graphs and answer questions. Okay, questions and discussion.